tonight, and I'm not going to take a long time, but I do want to share a word tonight about uh, the Holy Spirit power uh, for today. And uh, I want to invite you to open, if you have your Bible, you can turn to the book of Acts chapter 2. We've been talking about the book of Acts. We've been talking about the Holy Spirit for several weeks now. And I believe that we are in a season where God desires to pour out his spirit in a new way. Even here in Tallahassee, in this capital city region, God is moving by his spirit, by his power. We're even sensing here in the house of prayer throughout the week as people are coming in and different uh, worship teams are, are playing and singing and we're praying with uh, different groups of people uh, during a noon prayer sometimes on Tuesday, on Thursday. There's just, there, God is doing something. And, uh, and so we're very excited about that and we want to uh, make you aware that God wants you to participate with him. There's something he wants you to be involved in as uh, a part of the, the body of Christ moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in Acts chapter 2, I want to read this uh, very famous uh, passage here in, uh, in chapter 2 and verse 16. As Peter, the apostle, is preaching, he says, But this is what was spoken uh, by the prophet Joel. <clears throat> it will come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, and on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out of my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. <clears throat> and I believe that um, this passage here is, is uh, both for uh, what took place in the, in the biblical times, the book of Acts when it was written, but also today, what is happening today, as God is pouring out his spirit on our sons and our daughters, but also in the future. There's a future application uh, that God is going to uh, turn. Uh, uh, he's going to show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. How many believe that Jesus Christ is coming back to set up his kingdom in the earth, right? And we will be part of that procession talking about the procession in Washington, D.C. through Awaken the Dawn. Yeah, we're going to awaken the dawn, all right. We're going to, you know, we're going to shake some spiritual pillars on the National Mall as we're up there. I'm sure we'll be drinking lots of coffee to stay awake through the, the night hours, right? Um, but there's, there's coming a time where Jesus will uh, descend in, in the nation of, of Israel, and he will set up his kingdom, and it says that all the saints will be coming with him, at that point. <coughs> but before <coughs> that takes place, according to Joel chapter 2, there will be, uh, it, it will be great times and terrible times at the same time. Great times because God is going to pour out his Holy Spirit upon the earth. Now, we've seen pockets of the Holy Spirit being poured out in different places, different times, different nations. Many of us have been a part of awakenings that took place at different times. Pam and I came out of what, what was called the Jesus Movement Awakening that took place back in 1969, 70 through 75, probably. Just a mighty outpouring of God's Spirit in, in America, uh, but also in other parts of the world. But in America, as God uh, came to a, a lot of lost young people and uh, put a desire within them to want to know God and seek God. And that's exactly what happened. If you had known us back in those days as young people, uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't recognize us. And uh, if, I, if, you, if you were to tell me back then, hey, you're going to be a Christian, you're going to serve God, you're going to read your Bible and go to church, I would say, what? You know, what's wrong with you? You know, I mean, I was, you know, whatever. I don't want to go into details about all of that stuff. But God is pouring his spirit out in, in this hour that we're living. And I'm very excited about that. I want to be a part of what God is doing in this hour. How about you? Amen? And so um, 
In Acts chapter 2, powerful passage, I want to turn to the book of Isaiah, if you would. Turn with me to chapter 43. Chapter 43, the book of Isaiah. I love the book of Isaiah. It's probably one of my favorite books in the Bible, 66 books. Um, Isaiah the prophet. I want to meet him someday. How about you, right? Where was that? Where is uh, Isaiah the prophet? Is it uh, in Washington? Where not he somewhere? I mean, he doesn't live there. No, no, don't get me wrong. Where's a statue of him is what I'm trying to say. Oh, I know what it is. It's Michelangelo. How many remember Michelangelo? I'm not talking about the Italian restaurant down the road, okay? Michelangelo, didn't he do a statue? Yes. Yes, in Rome. Okay, now, now it's all coming back to me. I know I've seen Isaiah the prophet, okay? He's not in Washington. He's in Rome. All right. Okay. Now I'm getting my facts straight. Just give me the facts. Just give me the facts. Isaiah 43 and verse 18. <coughs> it says, do not remember the former things, nor consider things of old. In other words, don't, don't keep thinking about things that used to happen and the way things used to be. God says this, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth Shall you not know it? You know that word new thing means fresh. God says, I will do, I'm doing something fresh, something new in this hour. And I believe that that is an invitation for each one of us to say, Lord, I am done with the old. I'm done with the starchy, dead religion. I want the new thing that you have for me, Lord. I want the power of your Holy Spirit in this hour. And so God is inviting us uh, into this place of moving with him in this hour, moving with the Holy Spirit uh, as he desires to do in the earth today. <clears throat> and so God is inviting us into this partnership with him through the power of the Holy Spirit. And there's different ways that he's, in, he's bringing this invitation to us. And I want to just share a couple with you uh, that you can ponder and think about tonight. I believe, first of all, that God wants to turn, he wants us to turn the reins of our heart and our life over to him. Everybody say reins, the reins of your heart. Uh, has anybody ever ridden a horse? You know, you have reins in the mouth, a bit and bridle in the mouth of a horse, and you have reins, you know, around them. I don't necessarily like horses. They don't like me. That's the main reason why, because they're always trying to bite me or kick me or... <laughs> something maybe they uh maybe they recognize that I'm a foreigner or something and you know they just don't want to mess with me and maybe it's because uh, I'm carrying in my heart you know some old uh, baggage some old bitterness from years ago uh when I was riding with some uh, girls in high school and uh, I'm not okay so I'm not a redneck I'm not a farmer I'm not I don't understand things like that. I know cars a little bit and motorcycles, but I'm not into horses and animals. And so they uh, were just going to go riding, and they invited me. Hey, why don't you go with us? And we have a horse. Hey, listen, this horse, he won't hurt you. He won't bite you. <clears throat> he won't kick you. He's a real nice horse. In fact, he's really, really old. In fact, he's so old, his back is kind of bowed, okay? And so it's kind of like... All you got to do is just sit on the back of this horse and don't worry about a thing. We'll take care of it all. I said, okay, well, sure, you know. I mean, high school kid, I, I'm, you know, I trust in Jesus and all that. I got on a horse and they took off galloping. I guess is that what you call it? They took off running with their horses. And he followed uh, along and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to sit on the horse. I didn't know how to, I was holding on for dear life. In fact, Every time my, my behind would go up, every time it would come down, the horse's back would go up and we would collide, all right? So, uh, I mean, I was walking like this for days after, and they were just laughing over on the side somewhere. It was all a setup, all right? That's not what it means when it says, turn the reins of your life over to Jesus, <laughs> all right? But God is inviting us to turn the reins of your life, your heart, over to him. In other words, you've been in control of your life. You've been ordering the steps of your life. You've been in charge of your life. And God says to you now, turn that over to me. I will take care of you. 
I will lead you. I will guide you. Trust me, the Lord says. I believe that's the very first thing that we must do uh, as we want to know the Lord in a deeper way, as we want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then the second thing I believe God wants to do is he wants us to get filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to say this. When you get saved, when you give your life to, to Jesus, to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and lives on the inside of you. He is, in, he is in residence in your life. He lives in you. You have the Holy Spirit. How many know that the King lives inside of you by the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Jesus does. But what God invites us into is to be filled, be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The word baptize is the word baptizo. It means to be completely immersed, like to be put into, it's like having a big uh, pot of water and taking a glass of, filling that pot with water and then taking a glass of water and then putting it inside of that pot and letting it be completely immersed in that, in that pot. That's what it means to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so the Lord wants us to be filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. That is what happened on the day of Pentecost as people were filled with the Holy Spirit. It says that people came from all different nations, uh, and they heard people speaking in their native language. They heard people speaking the great works of God in their, in, in their uh, own language that they had never learned. And so sometimes being baptized in the Holy Spirit can be God giving you a language that you don't even know that you are speaking to somebody else. I've heard testimonies of people sitting uh, on airplanes or, or, or traveling or whatever, and they're praying, and they're praying in the Spirit, and they're praying in, in a language they don't know. And somebody would say, well, when did you learn Chinese? Would you? Well, I don't know how to pray in Chinese. Well, but you were, and you were saying this, and they would uh, uh, re, uh, re-say what they were saying. And so that's, that is one uh, way of being filled with the Holy Spirit. But you can also be filled with the Holy Spirit with your very own private prayer language that God gives to you. And it's a prayer language that's that it's a direct connection with God through the power of the Holy Spirit. It speaks about this in Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14 deals with this as well. And so the Lord wants us to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, this includes being filled with the, with the Holy Spirit. This includes learning to hear His voice and to respond in obedience. How many has ever heard the voice of God? I've never heard the voice of God audibly. I don't think many people do. But how many has heard an invert? In, invert? We don't say W in Danish, okay? We say V's. And uh, the Germans don't say V's. When they say V, it's an F. How's that for confusing? And the Swiss, uh, when they say V's, they say W's. I worked with a Swiss guy one time, and he said, Tenny, when are you going on vacation? (laughs) And the Germans don't say vacation. They say they use they say F instead. They use the word F. I I didn't want to say the F word, but (laughs) that's not what they do. But they use it starts with an F, right? It's all confusing, right? Very confusing. How do we get there? And so. Oh, that's what it was. I didn't know how to say inward. Inward voice of God. There was also a song that goes that that my heart knows very well. That's really hard to say. (laughs) Where, where, where? Okay, Pam is helping me preach here. It's like move on. I got it. All right. I got the nudge of the Holy Spirit and the nudge of my wife. How many has ever heard the inward uh, voice of God? Yes. Have you heard the Lord nudge you on the inside and say things to you and speak to you and tell you things that you need to be careful of or things you need to do or whatever it might be? 
In Isaiah chapter 50 <coughs> and verse 4, it says, The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. How many of you are being awakened morning by morning? How many have a hard time getting up in the mornings? But the Lord awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. The Lord has opened my ear. One of the things that happens when you get into a closer walk with the Holy Spirit is you begin to hear God say things to you. He begins to direct your life. He begins to tell you, go this way. Oh, don't do this, but do this instead. Do this other thing or whatever it might be. That's learning. <coughs> That's developing a, a hearing ear. God wants us as his people to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, but also to learn how to hear God and to respond to the Lord. I believe there are many people today who they have a relationship with Christ. They know the Lord. They're saved and they're believers, but they really don't have a living relationship in the sense that they're walking with God and hearing what he's saying and being led by the Spirit of the Lord. I believe God wants to do that uh, in us in this hour. And I want you to have a, a heart's desire. I want you to desire that uh, from the Lord. I want you to go home today after we're done with the meeting tonight and say, God, I, I want that. I want you to speak to me, Lord. I want you, I want you to, I want to hear things that you're saying to me, Lord. And I want to be led by your spirit. I mean, you know that the, the, the gospel says that uh, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God, Right? <clears throat> and so the Lord wants to uh, help us to hear his voice in this hour. I want to uh, turn your attention to Proverbs chapter 8. As we're talking about this, there's a method of prayer. There's a, a way that we can pray that we can call a listening prayer. Listening prayer. Now, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 32. Now, therefore, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my sayings, Hear instruction and be wise, and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who, uh, who um, listens to me, watching daily at my gates, awaiting or waiting at the posts of my doors, for wh whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. And, and so this is what we call listening prayer. God will actually bring you into the place where you can actually hear the Lord talk to you and tell you things. I've heard this uh, said of um, some great people of God in the earth today. Some of them are business people. Uh, some of them are multi-billionaires. This is the testimony. They would say they're believers. And they would say this, uh, I make it my aim that every day when I get up, I spend time with God. And sometimes my time with God is, yes, I read his word, I pray, I talk to him, but sometimes I just sit in quiet solitude before the Lord and I listen. I just listen to God. And I, and I get real quiet before the Lord. And, and then sometimes he'll start speaking some things to me, and then I, I write it down in my little, in my little book, in my little um, journal. I write it down, and I pray over it, and, and then I, some of those things I begin to put into action, and God begins to bless what it is that he's saying and what I'm writing down. That's a very, very powerful concept that if you're not used to this, I want to invite you to, to begin to listen to God. You know, we don't have to be loud all the time to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We don't have to scream and run around the room and, you know, I mean, all those things are fun, <laughs> you know what I mean, and just get wild and crazy before the Lord. But sometimes God just wants us to be quiet and listen and wait upon the Lord and hear what he's saying and then let it go deep into our innermost uh, part of our being. And so God wants to teach us how to hear his voice and how to respond in obedience. And the third thing is, <clears throat> God wants us to get to know his word and to learn uh, to walk in the power of the word of God. How many know the Bible is the most powerful book there is in the world? It's not just a book, it's a living book. The Bible, the word of God. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 uh, says, uh, For the word of God 
it is living and it is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That word living uh, is the word uh, in, in the Hebrew. Hebrew. No, it's not. It's in the Greek. Everybody awake? What was it about Greek? No, the little sayings that we have. <coughs> the banana leaves a bunch gets peeled. What is fellowship? A bunch of fellows in the same ship. Um, oh, yeah. I know a little Greek, right? She runs a deli down on the corner of the street. Does anybody know Greek and Hebrew language? Anybody? I mean, just some words maybe or, you know, things like that. I love, um, I love studying the, um, what words mean in, in, the, in biblical text. In fact, I have a Bible um, applica- uh, app uh, program software, Olive Tree, where I can um, pull up different versions of the Bible, but I can touch a word because I have the strong um, uh, key words that you can, t- when you put your finger on them, it actually gives you the um, Hebrew or the Greek original meaning of the word, and you can look up the definition of it. I love that. And maybe you have something like that, too. And, and I love just uh, looking at certain words that pop out at me, and then I, I put my finger on that word, and, and then I take the meaning of that, and I write it in my Bible. That's why my Bible gets all messed up, right? <clears throat> and, uh, but the Word of God is living, and it is powerful, and it is sharper than any, any two-edged sword. And that word ener- uh, uh, powerful means energous. Energies, energy, we get the word energy from there. It means something at work, something active, something that is effective. How many want want something effective in your life today? I want something that works, right? We want something that is effective. (coughs) I've been talking about Reinhard Bonnke. Last few weeks, I've been listening to his book, Life of Fire. And uh, when he was uh, seeking answers... (coughs) <coughs> Pardon me. About what brings God's miracle working power to deliver and heal people, the Lord spoke to him simply and he said, um, Put my word in your mouth. He says this. I need some water. Can you help me? You want to preach for a minute? <laughs> you are serious. <coughs> I don't know what Reinhard Bonnke said. What so, <laughs> what did he say? My words in your mouth are just as powerful as my words in my mouth. Ah, he's talking to the Lord. That the Lord. I mean, Lord's talking to him, saying that God's word in, in uh, your mouth are as powerful as my words in my mouth. Is that right? That just doesn't sound right. Anyway, I, I don't know what he means, but I'm going to finish up, okay? Because the Lord heal him, heal him. And uh, you know what? I don't know what direction he's going, but God does. And so we're talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit and what God wants to do. And you know, tonight, that's his heart, that he wants us to just understand the power of the Holy Spirit, to understand what the book of Acts is talking about and what the book of Romans is talking about, and that we've been talking about living a life of fire. And I found notes in my Bible from like 1990-something talking about fire, living a life of fire. And, and here God is um, having us read this autobiography by a powerful evangelist that's led over 75 million people across the uh, continent of Africa and other nations to the Lord. And the Lord wants us to live in a spirit-filled life where we understand who, who the Lord is and what he wants to do. And, uh, you know, I've, uh, earlier tonight, I forgot to say that Eric and Renee had gotten back from Israel on Thursday. On, uh, from being there for two weeks in Israel um, and their hearts are just so filled up and the kids, they were sharing with them. And you know, it was funny, they were back here yesterday. We have um, a time where moms can come into the prayer room and we keep the kids in the back and, and talk to them about the Lord and stuff. And Eric's uh, and Renee's oldest son, Joshua, was building um, kind of a Lego thing and it was this long 
like a, and I said, what is it? You know, you're building some kind of a tower, but it was this way. And he goes, it's the Wailing Wall. And I thought, now that's cool. He's been listening to his parents talk about the places they've been in Israel. And I thought, Lord, let these kids be filled with the Holy Spirit from a young age. Let the fire of God minister to them. And that's what we want too. How many of you guys want the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? Yes. Okay. Why don't worship team, come on up. Let's just end this night. Um, I don't know what other notes you had. I cannot read in your... uh Decla- yeah, declaring God's word in prayer. Yes, well, we're going to end in prayer. Come on up, worship team. So I'll just mention a couple more things. Thank you for your patience and this ridiculous way of doing things here at the House of Prayer. Um, but he said to Reinhard Bonnke, my words in your mouth are just as powerful as my words in my mouth. This is the Lord speaking to him. And so you begin to declare the word of God. Begin to speak the word of God. Read, read the word, but begin to speak it to every situation that you encounter. You know, Isaiah 55, verse 11, it says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I purpose, what I please. And so we begin to speak the word of God into every situation that we are encountering. And... Um, um, we want to declare God's word in prayer. <clears throat> First, God invites us into conversation with him. He invited uh, Abraham into conversation with him in Genesis chapter 18. They began to converse and talk about, you know, what is going to happen with the, with the um, city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he begins to contend in prayer. And, um, and so the Lord wants to uh, teach us. Um, to be in that place of prayer and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so tonight, we just want to do that. Worship team, thank you so much for your patience. People, thank you all for your patience. Lord, we just ask you tonight to move by your spirit and power. Lord, I pray that um, I thank you, Lord, for what you've already done in this place here tonight, Lord. And I pray that your word would go forth with great power and that you would uh, touch our hearts, Lord, to believe you. To walk in faith, Lord, and to just believe you to do great and mighty things uh, in our lives and in, in our surroundings, Lord. So we thank you for that, and we love you. In Jesus' name, I want to invite you to stand. Hey, thanks for watching this week's message. Stay connected with our social media accounts for news and upcoming events. And if you'd like to financially support what God's doing here, visit ihoptlh.org give to partner with our work.